Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt and today I want to talk about Adobe Premiere Rush. Now this is a really exciting app because it basically gives people who are in the Adobe ecosystem the opportunity to now edit on the go and use Creative Cloud to sync their files across. Today, I really want to go over my initial impressions, what I enjoyed about using it, what I didn't enjoy so much, and maybe some thoughts about mobile editing in general. So let's jump straight into it. So to jump into my initial thoughts with Premiere Rush, I was really impressed with, I guess, the power behind it, but also the ease of use as well. And this is compared to some other applications which are also available for the iPhone at the moment as well. And that includes things like iMovie. Now, obviously iMovie is free, it comes built in with your iPhone and it's a pretty great editor for most little things on that you might need to do. But there definitely be, there comes a time uh, <laughs> when you might be editing something, for example, for IGTV. You might want a portrait video, you might want a square video. And that's been something in the past which has been really difficult to do with these kind of editors. But Premiere Rush makes that really easy. You have an option down the bottom just to change the aspect ratio and I really enjoyed that. I really liked how similar parts of Premiere Pro were actually integrated into Premiere Rush. And this includes things like having the project panel uh, where you had all your media. You also had visible tracks and being able to turn the opacity for those tracks on and off. And that's something that on other, some other video editors, again, I'm mainly, I guess, talking about iMovie at this point. That's not something that you're able to do. I also really enjoyed the color features as well. There are some pre-built in kind of looks available to you. But you can also jump into the more advanced tab and adjust things just like you would in Lightroom CC. Um, now, if you've used Lightroom CC, it's also another application which is designed to integrate with Creative Cloud, sync all your files, be available on your iPhone, Mac, everything else. Uh, and you have those similar kind of controls here with Premiere Rush, which was great. I think the main one for me is how easy it was to cut on Premiere Rush. Now, the great thing is you just be scrolling along a track using your thumb <laughs> again to scroll between like to scroll through this entire track. And then when you reach the point which you wanted to cut, you could literally just hit the scissors icon down the bottom and it would split the track into two. There was also an option to duplicate the clip as well. I don't know how often I would want to use this, um, but it's definitely an option there for you. And you can also just delete it as well with the trash bin icon just down the bottom there too. So some really easy controls to actually edit. And I was really happy with the fact that you could actually go frame by frame scrubbing through it as well. I think for me, one of the most exciting things about it is the ability that you're going to be able to start a project in Premiere Rush on your computer these days, import the original media, and then have that be converted by the application to H.264 proxies to be available anywhere on the go, either through your iPad or your iPhone. So ideally, what you'd be able to do is you'd be able to just make quick little adjustments while you're out and about. And this might be great Theoretically, for those little jobs where you might have an idea and you quickly just want to try it out, so you open up Premiere Rush on your phone, you, you do that while you're on the train, for example, you do that while you've got a spare minute. And that's the most exciting prospect at the moment for these mobile editors. And it's probably the reason that Adobe are starting to target this kind of area as well, because a lot of people are trying to get in on this action. As I mentioned, we have iMovie, which is a free application that's available already on your phone. But now we've got apps like LumaFusion, which are getting more and more powerful. Now, there are some features missing in Premiere Rush, and I just mentioned LumaFusion. One of those features is chroma keying that LumaFusion does allow you to do. And this was, I watched a video recently actually uh, about someone using LumaFusion to chroma key and edit on their iPad Pro. And it was pretty amazing what they were able to do. The experience is a little bit more convoluted and I really still enjoy the experience of editing on a computer. I have no complaints in that respect. But I think what we're talking about now is just having the options and the flexibility to be able to edit on the go. Another thing as well, which I really would like to see, I guess, better integrated is originally I had this idea to edit this entire video on Premiere Rush on my phone. And I was thinking about how I was going to import these files onto my phone, first of all, and how I was going to import the separate media for the audio if I did dual system audio. And then it kind of struck me that it'd be really, really hard to sync that audio if I did dual system audio because of how imprecise sometimes it is to edit on the iPhone in terms of dragging audio tracks. Or when you're going frame by frame scrubbing, you don't hear the audio like you do on your computer when you're pressing the arrow key. Uh, and this is really helpful for syncing audio and making sure it sounds proper. Uh, and because you don't have, I guess, that frame by frame kind of control, uh, when it comes to audio or you, you can't really see the the waveform as well as you could on a computer it makes it extremely difficult to do things like syncing unless they're done automatically but the great thing is this is something that can come with time 
And it just needs to be a feature that needs to be integrated into Premiere Rush maybe in the future to sync uh, dual system audio and then quickly turn off the audio of the main track, which you can do. It's very easy to turn off the main audio. You just got to go to the audio tab and click mute. I guess another thing I wanted to talk about was the difference between editing on an iPhone to editing on a computer and how I felt kind of going to Premiere Rush on an iPhone to try and edit something rather than opening the full version of Premiere Pro on my computer. It's a different experience. And to me, anyway, it feels a little bit more limiting to what I can do. And I think the downside at the moment is the application for me is setting the boundaries of what I can do and what I can't do. And therefore kind of dictates things like the tools that I can use and dictates how I need to edit as well. And as I mentioned before, this is gonna be something that's gonna be improved over time and will basically be integrated into the app as it gets more powerful with more features. But right now, to me, editing on an iPhone is really challenging and I can't imagine myself doing it day in, day out if I wanted to. Now I get before people start saying in the comments, this isn't designed to be a sole iPhone, iPad video editor. It's designed to be something that works cross platform. The great thing about that is you could start a project on your computer and then you could open up your iPhone and you could edit it and then you could open your iPad and fix something up really quickly and then you could literally export it from your iPhone if you wanted to. But of course, there are gonna be clear downsides to that. This is not me, just to, for clarification, this is not me having a go at Premiere Rush because what they've managed to do is really amazing so far and I've really enjoyed using the app. And I recognize that these features that I'm talking about right now, they're gonna come in the future as these devices get more powerful. And also Adobe are thinking of a certain kind of person when they're making this app. And for some people, like the traditionalists who are downloading their royalty-free music and going ahead and creating their professional client videos. This is not what Premiere Rush is about at this point. It's really a, for me, I guess, it's it's for people who are editing more basically. It's a way to be more accessible as well and get more people on board with Premiere because you can imagine that if you start with iMovie, you're more likely to move to Final Cut. If you start with another application that is just always there and available to you, you're gonna stay with that ecosystem if you're happy with it. So what Adobe are doing at the moment are trying to target those people who maybe are just starting out and do wanna be able to edit things easily. And Premiere Rush is the perfect kind of application for them because of how simple and easy it is to use. And then you have your clear differentiation to Premiere Pro, which is a separate beast entirely. Obviously a lot more powerful in terms of features, but not available for iPhone. So just to make this really clear, Premiere Rush is not a replacement for Premiere Pro. It's a totally different kind of application and it has its different uses. The really exciting part is there are some features of Premiere Rush, like the ability to have these original files be converted to proxy files, which are available anywhere, which is setting up some exciting future for Premiere Pro and for editors who are doing something a little bit more powerful. And a couple of other quick things I wanted to mention was the fact that you can't actually change the speed and duration, not that I know of just yet on Premiere Rush, which is really unusual. You can do that in LumaFusion, I know. Uh, but it's hopefully something that's going to be integrated in the near future. Another thing as well for me was the fact that I was trying to edit this video on Premiere Rush, and this is actually been inserted later on. And even though I didn't use dual system audio, it was all recorded into the camera. I was trying to do jump cuts, and the thing that I, the things that I mentioned before, things like that you couldn't hear audio scrubbing as you were going frame by frame were made it really difficult. I kind of needed to rely on these audio waveforms. Uh, and Premiere Rush does give you an option to sort of separate the video and the audio into separate tracks so you can actually look at them separately. But the problem is, as you're going frame by frame and you go into the next clip, it, it creates, it just sort of highlights around it and it creates these really thick yellow borders on either side. So I couldn't even see as I was going frame by frame where I started speaking, where there was silence, and then when I started speaking on the end edges of the clip. And that made it extremely difficult. And I kind of, even though I wanted to edit this in Premiere Rush, uh, I had to end up editing this in Premiere Pro. So for me, as I said, I'm not switching to Premiere Rush for most of my future projects, but it's something that I was really keen to explore because again, it's an exciting future coming up where we have devices in our pockets, which can literally make movies start to finish. You could use a camera on this. You could use your Premiere Rush. You can literally edit a video from beginning to end. Uh, however limiting that might be at this point, it's something that has room to grow. And that's what I'm really excited about. So if you haven't had the opportunity, I definitely, and you're a Creative Cloud user, 
definitely download Premiere Rush for your device, for your computer as well, and give it a bit of a use. I'd love to hear what you think down below about the app and whether or not you're gonna be using it uh, or whether or not you could use it based on what you're doing. I think if you're a YouTuber and you already have like a pre-rendered title uh, and you don't need to always create different titles, uh, you know, lower thirds, for example, or graphics might be perfect for you. Uh, but in some other respects, if you are sort of hitting, like hitting walls with it where you can't do what you want to do, that's where it's probably best to stick with what you currently have at the moment and keep using that until Premiere Rush just gets better and better and better. Or also Premiere Pro might integrate some of those features from Rush so that one day you could open up a Premiere Pro uh, on someone's computer and you would have access to your project files from your computer because they're all stored in Creative Cloud. And that to me is, is super exciting, especially for collaboration as well. If someone could literally, you could just share a project with someone and they could open up on their Premiere Pro and, and have it available to them. But again, if you're a bit more of a basic editor and you're hearing all of this, it's probably not gonna help you out too much at the moment, but just use Premiere Rush. It's a great little app to use on your iPhone. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think compared to other editors as well. If you've used iMovie or LumaFusion, what are your thoughts? So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this and I'll catch you in the next video.